Hello everyone, it's me again, Geisha Deidre, back with another video, so thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we'll be doing an analysis of two rivaling Japanese cities, Tokyo and Osaka. So without further ado, let's get right into this. To be honest, Tokyo and Osaka can seem like night and day. There are many differences between them. But today, I've grouped these differences into five main sections. Location, attractions, food, people, and cost. Without further ado, let's get started. The first category on our comparison list is location. Let's see how the city's placement affects its identity. One big difference between Tokyo and Osaka is that they're located in different regions. As you can see here, Tokyo is located in the Kanto region, while Osaka can be found in the Kansai region. The geographic variance of both of these cities is the source of many of their differences, including the different versions of Japanese they speak, the food they eat, and climate. Also, Tokyo is nearly three times bigger than Osaka, so that definitely plays a role too. The city of Tokyo has over 9 million people, whereas Osaka has about 3 million people. Our second category is attractions. Let's see what brings tourists to each of these locations. Let's start with Tokyo first. As the biggest city in Japan, the eastern capital has a lot to offer. Tokyo is undoubtedly the pop culture center of Japan. Here we can find Akihabara, the anime mecca of Japan. This unique feature of Tokyo makes it truly an otaku's paradise where nerds can geek out in peace. But even if you're not necessarily a fan of anime or manga, Tokyo can still hold a lot of features that can meet your fancy. For example, Tokyo is home to the Imperial Palace, where the Emperor of Japan lives. Tokyo is also home to Tokyo Disneyland, Tokyo Tower, and tons of other traditional temples like Sensoji and Meiji Jingu. Tokyo is also home to the University of Tokyo, also known as Tokyo University, which ranks 26th among the world's best universities and it is number one in all of Asia. Ah, Tokyo. It's truly a sight to behold. If you ever get a chance to come to Japan, definitely stop by. One great thing about Tokyo is that it has a little bit of everything. I'm sure you'll be able to find an activity that meets your interests. Now that we've seen what Tokyo brings to the table, let's have a look at what Osaka can do. One of Osaka's biggest attractions is Dotombori, an illuminated district in downtown. It's a very beautiful area that's accessible by foot, so it's more tourist friendly. Osaka is also home to Osaka Castle, one of Japan's most historic castles, Universal Studios of Japan, as well as Osaka Aquarium, one of Japan's biggest and most impressive aquariums. One of my personal favorite attractions in Osaka is the Umeda Sky Building. This building is one of Osaka's most notable landmarks. This is a high-rise made of glass and steel with its own rooftop garden observatory. Let's continue on to our next section, food. How does the cuisine compare between Tokyo and Osaka? Japan as a nation prides itself in having a wide variety of delicious and nutritious foods. And although you're sure to curb your cravings in Tokyo, Osaka definitely takes the cake with this one. Even though Tokyo is the true capital of Japan, Osaka definitely holds its rank as the culinary capital of Japan with a wide variety of different dishes and popular street foods. This isn't to say that Tokyo's food doesn't taste good. In my opinion, most Japanese food tastes good. Most Japanese food, anyway. But Osaka simply has a reputation of having good food. Because Osaka is known for its food, there's a bit of a pressure there. Even other Japanese people who visit Osaka expect to have an extraordinary culinary experience. And if they don't, people feel duped. Like it was false advertising all along. It's almost a stereotype. For those of you who are from the United States, imagine Tokyo being New York and Osaka being Louisiana. The concept of duality or two sides of the same coin can be extended into our next section, 
people. Let's see how each of these cities affects the people who live there. The people of Tokyo, like the people of New York and the United States, have a kind of busybody mindset. People in Tokyo are said to be very professional and proper. A few examples of the quintessential Tokyo person are as follows fashion forward, wealthy, obsessed with brand names, independent, ambitious, hard working, creative, business oriented, and extremely intelligent. It's not uncommon to find a person in Tokyo who speaks English very well. Now, how does this compare to the people of Osaka? First, let's look at the kind of Japanese they speak. People from Osaka speak Kansai dialect. If you're not too familiar with the Japanese language, you may not be able to spot the differences between the normal Japanese and Kansai Japanese. However, Japanese people can note it as clear as day, and they assume certain things about you if you speak this way. The Kansai or Osaka dialect can be seen almost like a southern drawl. The Japanese who speak this way are seen as friendly and outgoing. They can also be described as being rowdy, rambunctious, and lively. It is said that people from Kansai, Osaka in particular, are very un Japanese in the sense that they don't really follow a lot of the stereotypes that the world has about Japan. But all in all, people from Osaka have a reputation of not giving up. Basically. Because of this stereotype, a lot of characters in anime and manga are given Kansai or Osaka dialects if they have a certain fiery personality. Here are a few examples you might know of. Although there are some negative stereotypes to being a person from Osaka, they also have a reputation for being really, really friendly, like people from the American South are said to be. Last but certainly not least, let's go to our final section of these comparisons, costs. How do Osaka and Tokyo differ financially? As a rule of thumb, it's more expensive to live in a cityscape than in a country setting. But considering both Tokyo and Osaka are urban cities, Osaka wins in a landslide. From rent to food to going out with friends, things tend to be a lot cheaper in Kansai in general. Well, that's all for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit more about both Tokyo and Osaka. If you like what you see, then hit like. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe and become part of the YouTube fam. I hope you all have a good day or a good night, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!